So about seven months ago, I bought a Unify Switch 16XG, and I did a review of that switch. It has been installed and working ever since in our network and has worked great. And that's what this video is about, is a follow-up to how does that switch work? Does it fail? Did it survive some firmware upgrades? How about the new version of Unify with it? The answer has actually been, we haven't had any problems at all with this switch. Now, I've got it installed in the field with some clients as well, and none of them have experienced any problems either, but specifically our use case for uh, having it filled with 10 gig SFPs and 10 gig RJ45 has gone really, really well. I haven't had any problems with it or headaches with it. And I wanna talk about a couple little things that I've done since getting this switch. Because I also purchased, and this was back in October and installed it right away in my computer, a Asus XGC100C 10 gig network adapter. And that's what I'm using now for my computer to keep it connected to the back to which it connects to my free NAS, giving me 10 gigabit connection between uh, here and there. So that's working out really well too. So it's plugged into one of these RJ45 ports. But as a follow-up though, like I said, I'm running the latest version. So I'll go over to my controller. This is the just released the other day, 5.10.23 Unify working flawlessly, haven't had any problems with it at all, but I wanted to talk about the switch specifically and the speed of the switch. Now I know the speed of the switch isn't that exciting. It should be at 10 gig, but the part I wanted to talk about was the fact that my computer's connected at 10 gig and why that's significant at all. So to give you a rough idea of my office, the server is roughly by the time you measure the cable up, back, over, and down, 30 feet of cable, maybe 25 feet of cable from where my computer is till it gets to there. And when we were running cable for this building, when we were assembling it, what we had available happened to be some Cat 5e. So I just ran it with Cat 5e. It's a short run. But I'm connected at 10 gig. Yes. And that's actually something I wanted to show and show the statistics on the switch. Here is the standard Unify dashboard, for, so you can see stuff on here. Uh, you can see how we're plugged in. So we have these SFP ports at the top all filled in. Uh, we have two free NASs and two Zen servers, and they all share this right here as the storage pool. Then this is the connection to the rest of the network, so it can uh, get out there, which I'm using Unify switches for that too. So it's only uplinked at 20 uh, at one gig because it's connected to a 24 port Unify that doesn't have a 10 gig connector on there, but that's fine. My computer gets 10 gig from this port right here, this other RJ45 port. And like I said, it's connected over Cat5e, not Cat6a or Cat6. And this is a kind of a quick layout if you're wondering how my network looks. This is that where that switch sits in layout form of my network. And here's the SFP cables plugged in from each of these. And then here's the one switch there. And like I said, my office computer falls into one of the ports for 10 gig. But let's show the speed test. That's what I came here for. So this at the top here is the Dozer FreeNAS, the 10 gig connected machine. Uh, and it has a SFP plus 10 gig card in it. So this is connected via SFP plus to the Unify switch. And it's running iperf3 on it uh, so I can set it up as a listener. And its IP address is 192.168.3.8. And this is the one of the Zen servers I logged into. And I'm going to show you the 10 gig connection with it. It is also connected at SFP+. So going through, it's has no problem completing full gigabit between the Zen server directly raw on the hardware, not one of the VMs, and the free NAS that it talks to. So we have full 10 gigabit. And also please note, there's no retries on here very clean. Now I can ping this perfectly fine. And it, no problems there, but this is the experiment. Is will it do 10 gigabit without having Cat6a cable on it? And it does. Uh, no problem, but you notice there's a few retries in here. So I was still able to get the data across, but I have noticed occasionally when it's running full tilt like this, so to speak, and you're saturating the entire pipe, it occasionally seems to lose a little bit of packets, but there is no packet loss from a ping because you're not saturating the entire time. This particular time it didn't. That's the only problem so far I've had. I wanted to cover 
that little aspect of it that, you know, even because it's a short run and it's Cat 5e, it's still actually able to stay connected steady, not have any packet loss until you saturate it. Occasionally it gets a couple retries. I'm glad it did it on the first time as it didn't do it on the second time. Uh, but overall, the switch has been working great. This card by Asus has really been flawless as well. Uh, even over Cat 5e, like I said, I'm doing it not recommended. Um, and I know I could swap it out. I actually have a bunch of spools of Cat 6a uh, in the back area of our office right now. And yes, we do wiring. But, you know, I thought I'd do some experiment with it like this. And I'm actually kind of surprised that it works so well. And I, for the same experiment, have tested a few other devices that connect at 10 gig and plugged them into the switch and they actually seem to work pretty well as long as the run isn't too long. Maybe that'll be another experiment of just how long you can run Cat 5e before there's a problem uh, trying to run 10 gig over it. But my feelings on the Switch overall, it's been great. It's survived many firmware updates uh, as they've come out, and it hasn't had any problems. I've never had it lock up. I've never had it reset. And having the four ports that allow uh, 10 gig RJ45s and then having you know, 10 SFP plus ports means I have plenty of room to add more things later. And I believe you can even adapt some of the SFP ports. You can get the little inserts to turn them back into RJ45 as you needed. But so far, these four I found to be perfectly fine. Uh, but that's just, like I said, it's a mini follow-up. I just want to say that the Switch works great. And I think it's important to follow up on devices, not just leave them on the shelf or let people know if they worked or not. Because my overall experience with Unify Switches has been very positive with the entire stack of Unifies that we deploy to clients. Uh, we've rarely had any fail. And when the times we have had systems fail, Unify has been awesome. Well, we sent them the switches. They sent us right back one uh, via RMA, and the process was actually pretty painless. We didn't have to talk to anybody. That's uh, my measure of painless is not having to talk to people sometimes and just getting the process done of, you know, replacing something that went bad. It's rare they've gone bad. We have seen it. But based on the quantity we install versus how many go bad, it's a really low number. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.